This is an incredibly exciting time for research. Technological advancement and the data revolution have pushed the boundaries of research. Discoveries unimaginable a generation ago are uncovered every single day. Just recently, the early discovery of a new antibiotic using a different novel method to infiltrate bacteria and to treat certain infections. The fact that NASA has just landed a probe on Mars after a 300 million mile journey. Or researchers at Stanford using the Apple Watch to really try and determine whether wearable technology could identify issues with the human heart. We here at Elsevier are incredibly excited about such discoveries. They're at the heart of everything we do here, supporting the role of research community, helping them share amazing breakthroughs, reshape human knowledge, and tackle the most urgent global challenges. This is what brings meaning to everything we do. The tech revolution has brought a significant advancement in research by making an unprecedented amount of data available and enabling the extraction of ever more knowledge from that data. At the same time, the deluge of information poses a new challenge. For example, staying up to date in any given field of research is a near impossible task today. With over 3 million articles published this year across more than 42,000 academic journals, researchers' creativity is often constrained by the challenge to find, to filter, to read and absorb new research findings. Researchers have told me directly this year of the many demands that they are facing, whether it's evaluating content sources' trustworthiness, finding collaborators, gathering, structuring and sharing data, documenting their findings, and ultimately communicating the impact of their research. We at Elsevier think that the universe of tools, the applications, the content that they have at their disposal to execute their tasks, and we know those as the information system supporting research. And that system has been around for well over 100 years. Today's challenge is that the existing information system is sometimes outdated and fragmented across a multitude of applications and resources, often burdening researchers rather than supporting them. In fact, sometimes it feels like the best minds of the 21st century are actually running on a 20th century information system. And actually, it's companies like Elsevier who have to bear some of the responsibility for that. In the past, putting the researcher first meant primarily publishing high-quality journals and books. And while high-quality, trustworthy content will remain critically important, that singular focus is no longer sufficient. Today, we have an obligation to broaden our work by putting the researcher at the heart, at the very centre of the entire information system. And doing so, we have to address the many challenges that are being faced, whether it's enabling effective peer review, matching collaborators <coughs> seamlessly, facilitating the securing of funding, and supporting and helping to demonstrate the beneficial impact of that research on society. This is the same idea that underlies the core of the open science concept. And all stakeholders have the responsibility to develop the information system supporting research together. My name is Olivier. I joined Elsevier seven years ago, and prior to Elsevier, I was in Silicon Valley on the side doing research myself in information retrieval, and in particular in search ranking and blending. And I also did some research on offline simulation. So joining Elsevier seven years ago, seven years ago I immediately grew passionate about the information system supporting science. I immediately saw that what underpins the information system is trust. Trust has to be everywhere in the information system. And trust has been around in the information system supporting research and should be even more there going forward. So thinking about how to make the information system better, we should think about four core principles. The first one is that the information system supporting science has to be source neutral. So what it means is that in the seven years I've been at Elsevier and in my prior life as a researcher myself, I've all never relied on only one data set repository. I've never relied on one preprint server or one publisher only. Of course, I had to search across everybody, all the research uh, knowledge that is available. And of course, that means that I was myself source neutral and the information system has to be source neutral as well. The second characteristic of the information system is that it has to be interoperable. Uh, today, it's not always interoperable. When I use software, when I use a content source, when I use a, a vendor tool, I mean, 
often it's not directly and seamlessly interoperable with the next tool that I'm using on the same user session. And we want all those tool sets to be interoperable. The third core principle is that we want the information system to be completely transparent. So what it means, for example, in the future when I'm going to receive a notification about an article to read or a data set to consume in my own research, I want to know why this notification is being pushed to me. Is it, for example, because I've co-authored a paper with one of the authors of that paper? Or is it because in my own publication, I already made use of that data set that is being pushed to me again? The fourth and last core principle that maybe is even more important than the, the other three is that we want the researcher the users to be in control always. We never want technology or the information system to be making decisions on their behalf. That's the reason why at the core of the information system, we want to build and we want to, to be there something that we call an, a user privacy center where users can go to and set up how they want the system to consume their data, share their data, and potentially let their data be reused in an anonymous way. In this building, we're lucky enough to have researchers come in every week and talk to us about how they're trying to work with the information system in science. What I want to do is um, explain some of the problems that we're trying to solve together with researchers and how we bring the four principles that Olivier talked about to life in those products that are already live today. First example that I'm going to talk about is helping researchers to discover early stage and publish knowledge and to understand the impact of that. I'm going to use an example um, from SSRN, which is Elsevier's um, platform for disseminating early stage knowledge. Um, I'm going to talk about um, an example that I got interested in in the finance and economics sphere recently, the hot topic of shadow banking. What I wanted to know was what is the topic of discussion now, not the stuff that has been peer reviewed and published, but what are researchers really thinking about and what's the discussion in that field now. So I did a search in SSRN, as you can see. It searched across the different disciplines and it came up with this particular paper. Um, you can see um, transparency on the downloads and the abstract view, so we can really see what impact this is having with the finance and economics community. The researcher who submitted this paper is in control of how it is disseminated. He or she can choose to disseminate it privately attached to his profile or to make it publicly available to that whole community. Of course, half early stage research gets published and you can see that this paper that was submitted at the beginning of last year has actually become a published paper. Um, it appears in Science Direct as part of the Journal of Financial Economics and just published this month. What I'm interested now then is how this paper has been consumed by the research community since its publication. And you can see on the right hand side some metrics here which make it pretty transparent how that paper is being consumed. So if I dig a little bit deeper, you can see, for example, that there's capture information, who has downloaded that paper from a number of different sources. And you can see in this example how it's been distributed on Twitter as well. So there's the different tweets and, and retweets. So we're able to get a really good idea of how this paper is having an impact in the broader community. These metrics are really transparent, so you can go to the Plum website, you can see exactly how they're calculated and exactly which sources, both Elsevier and non-Elsevier, contribute to these metrics and rankings. Second thing I wanted to talk about then is the problem that researchers have of staying up to date. We know there are about three million papers published every year, and we know, particularly from the early and mid-career researchers who visit us here, that they might spend up to five hours a week making sure that they're reading the right stuff from those three million papers. And in particular, they're worried about missing out on the one critical bit of research that they really must know about. On Mendeley, we have a feature that helps to recommend papers to researchers so that they don't miss out on that critical bit of research that's related to their interests. You can see, for example, when I saved the paper that we talked about earlier, the FinTech paper, Mendeley then searched through the one and a half billion entries into, in the Mendeley catalog to recommend some other papers that I should read on that topic. What's really important here is that the recommendation is transparent. It is because I read this paper that this one is being recommended, so I can clearly see the link. What's also important is that this is source neutral. Um, so this is not an Elsevier paper, it's actually from a different <coughs> publisher. So Mendeley pulls on a range of sources from across the published landscape. 
It's also very important that researchers are in control of how this information is pushed to them and how their information may be shared with others. So on Mendeley, we have a very clear and granular set of options for how you might want to consume that information on what frequency and via what medium. And you can also choose different privacy options around who can see your information, whether it should be indexed in search engines, and generally how information about you may be consumed by others. So we're upholding this principle of user in control and transparency on use of researchers' information. Finally, I want to talk about the problem of helping researchers to manage their data. And we hear from researchers two main uh, questions. One is, can you help me find data on the topics that I'm interested in? It's a very fragmented set of information and data out there. It's hard to find data that I want. And secondly, can you help me share my information with my collaborators? So Mendeley data um, has features that can do just that. I'm going to switch domains here. Here is an example from the biochemistry field where I was searching for VEGF, which is a growth hormone, um, an enzyme that can be implicated in some cancer pathways. If you search for this on Mendeley data, you can adjust your search in a number of different ways. So the user can select different search options, presented them to help them be in control and refine their search. When you look at the results that Mendeley data presents back, it does present results from the Mendeley data repository. However, the search is also integrated across 35 other external data repositories, and it searches through all of those for the results that you see here. In this case, from Zenodo and from NeuroElectro, the, the next results that come up. So the, the tool is interoperable across all of those different data sets in research so that we're not confining researchers to one particular set. The second thing that I wanted to show you about data management is how we help researchers manage their own data. Researchers commonly do want to share their data, but they might want to share it first with people in their project group or privately before making it public once they've published their results and their data. So Mendeley Data has options for researchers to share their data set within a group like this, privately with named others, instead of or before publishing it publicly and pushing it to the right-hand side of this chart. Again, that's very much putting the researcher in control of what they share, how and when. The other thing we hear from researchers is that they want sharing options that work with the other sharing platforms that people use. In research, Dropbox is particularly common, so we've built an integration so that a couple of my colleagues can share information from their Dropboxes into our um, collaboration group. So again, this notion of interoperability with the tools that researchers are already using today. So I hope that you've seen through the examples that I've shown you that we're really bringing these principles to life and embedding them in how we build our products. We have a lot more to do, but we look forward to working with researchers to keep building out these parts of the information system supporting research. So in summary, we see ourselves in a very much supporting role and excited to jointly work with researchers, with research institutions and funders to develop the tools and the system together that put researchers at the centre and help them do their important work. This is meant to be an invitation to co-create the answers for the future. We are ready to play our part and we're excited to do so in making every aspect of the research life cycle more connected, more transparent and more inclusive. Thank you.